My friends, you know what they say on YouTube, if you want to jinx a project, all you have to do is say, this will be really easy. <laughs> I have a setup that I'm about to do, and it should be really easy. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it right after this. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. We have an old violin. The date on this violin says 1723, but if I were guessing on it, I would say either late 1700s or early 1800s. Um, the only thing that's throwing me off is it does not have a grafted neck. A grafted neck is a neck where they lengthen the neck and they, they save the original peg box and put a grafting mark through here where they reattached it to the new neck. It doesn't have that. So I would say it's probably had a brand new neck put on it is what I would guess. But whoever did it did a nice job. Um, it's got a lot of breaks and things. It's not been repaired very well over the years. It's been refinished, I'm sure. But for all our purposes, I think all we've got to do is do a simple setup. I said it again, didn't I? <laughs> Let's see how it goes. The strings I'm opting for are these. These are Diodario Pro Art. They're a, a J56W and then 4 slash 4M. So they're a medium tension and they have an aluminum wound E string. So even the E is wound. They're a nylon core and with, uh, on the other, the other strings are nylon core. So they give you the sound a little bit of gut or at least similar to gut yet so they have a little softer sound, if you will. Not such a harsh steel sound, but yet they play really nice and loud and clear. They're very good strings, in my opinion, for someone that wants a nice sound, but yet doesn't want to spend two or three hundred dollars for a set of gut strings or something. These are in the neighborhood of fifty dollars for a set of these these days. When I started out selling these, they were in the neighborhood of around twenty dollars. So that'll give you some idea how things are going up. The strings that are on this don't look horrible. Violin strings tend to last longer than a lot of other strings. So I'm just gonna wind these up, throw them in their case in case they would happen to break one. Well then at least they'd have some ability to replace a string. Uh, I don't normally save other strings, but like I said, violin strings are expensive and these don't really look to be in that bad a shape to begin with, so I'm just going to coil them up and leave them in their case. And they may do with them as they wish. You know, if they were guitar strings or other strings, they'd be in the bin, but in this case, we'll save them. So there you go. I'm just going to look it over to see what I think about the setup. The uh, this tailpiece string here, it's probably okay. It could be just a hair longer, for my opinion. This uh, tailpiece only has one adjuster. For my money, I'd prefer all the adjusters, but. I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this guy had it because I think he was playing this when he brought it to me or had been playing it and he had been playing it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this. For my money, I would change this out to a, a tailpiece that has all the adjusters. Now I know the orchestral folks uh, frown on that. Uh, that's not the way they want to do it, the, cl the classical folks. But uh, the folks I hang with are bluegrass country musicians, and they do like the uh, adjusters on there. So anyway, we're just going to go with it as it is and get her set up. Well, that was the A string. I thought, I'm so colorblind, I thought this was the red one, but I think it's the black one now that I look at it. It looks, seems small after I got it out of the package. This is the G string. The way I string them up is I start with the closest peg and then I just work that way. So I'll go G, E, D, and A is the way I do it. Just works out better that way overall. 
So here's the G. Like I said, I just picked the wrong one based on what I thought was a red one, but it turned out it was black. How do I know it's black? They pretty much tell you that on the package. What I do is, uh, now I don't have the sound post in this and I don't have the bridge on it, but uh, I typically go ahead and get the string started. And the way I'm doing this is I start them, you know, like that, and I wrap the first wrap on the wrong end of the peg. In other words, on the far end of the peg, I wrap the first wrap like that. Then I cross back over and wrap all the rest of the wraps toward the handle of the peg. And that way, well, it just works out very good. It makes a nice, neat job, and it looks good, and uh, it gets the string in approximately the right place for the groove. Now, I've got that one in place. I'm going to go ahead and set this bridge in place and just lightly set it there. Now, there's hardly any tension on that. In fact, it won't even hardly make a note yet. So that's the way you want to start. At least that's the way I start. Now the next string will be the E, so it'll be the small string, and that's this one. This one is the one with the adjuster, so we'll use the adjuster that's there. And we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll start wrapping it away from the handle, and then move it back toward the handle after we get the first wrap or so. And then by crossing over like that, that also locks the string on the peg where it can't pull off. Okay, so now we have two strings in place. I, I'm probably going to tweak this setup a little bit. I can see a few things wrong with it, but that's okay. I expect to have to do that. But we'll just at least get the strings in place first. Now we're going to go to the D string, which is the third uh, string that I put on, the way I go about this. And you can see how nice and neat they look there, wrapped. And then finally we'll put the A string on. Now you can see that the strings are on their, uh, in their normal places, but in my opinion these are very close together and they're not spread out across the bridge. In my opinion they, when they sound better when you spread them out across the bridge a little bit. And they're easier to play. So we're going to do that. But I guess I'll go ahead and set the sound post first. Now what I'm doing here is I'm basically putting this back about where it goes, uh, about where it's been, I guess. I can tell uh, where it's been. And generally speaking, you, there's two little notches here on each F hole. And generally speaking, you put the, um, the bridge across between those, uh, kind of in between the notches, if you will. And I'm just going to check the length of this. I'm hoping for 325 millimeters. And uh, if that's the case, well, it's actually further. Some of them you can't set to my standard. I like to set them to 325, and then that way they're, you know, kind of all the same. This one's right at 330, so it's five millimeters further back, meaning either the neck's different or, or the body's different on this violin compared to the average. And I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go ahead and set it at 330. Now, you might say, well, then your fret scale would be different. And that's true. Your fret scale is lengthened because of this. But that's just the way violin players play. They have to get that tone in their head for that intonation, the way that violin is set up. Um, yeah, I'm not real happy with the setup on this. So I think I'm going to... Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and get the sound post in here and then I'm going to tweak this bridge and probably tweak the nut a little bit too. The nut, the strings are a little bit tight on that, but not so much that they're just tight. They're a little bit uneven. They're, they're swayed toward the bass side. You can see there's more space on the treble side there than there is on the bass side. So, you know, I'm going to look at that too. Yeah. Well, that simple setup just got a little bit more complicated, but that's kind of normal for a violin setup when I look at them.
In my opinion, most people don't follow any particular standard when they're setting up violins, and I kind of do. I try to keep everything about the same on every one of them, and so that's what I'm going to do here. This is the uh, little hook thing I made uh, for placing sound posts, and they're not that difficult to place most of the time, and you shouldn't say that on camera either. But there it is, it's in place. Now if I can just adjust it a little bit without it falling out. And that's the tricky part, is the adjustment. It's pretty good, but not quite good enough. This fine, this, the uh, fine adjustments is where you always have your problems with these things. So, right at the moment it's standing and it's in place, but it's a little far forward and it's moving in leaps and bounds instead of just little bitty movements. That's pretty good right there. I'm happy with that. It's straight up and down and it's just behind it's just behind the bridge so it's located right about there. That looks pretty good and it looks to be pretty straight up and down. Maybe it's just a hair leaning toward the back. So I'm going to try to pull it toward the front a little bit. I think I did that. That looks pretty good to me. I think I'm going to leave well enough alone. All right, so the post is back in place. Yeah, I'm afraid to take the bridge out of there. It, the post may fall down when I do that, but I'm going to take it out. And I think I'm just going to refile this a little bit and get rid of the grooves that are there. And this, in my opinion, this bridge is cut wrong too. The, the name is generally to the back. And this one's got the name to the front. So I don't like that either, but I didn't create that problem. I'm just uh, going to go with it because that's the way it's been done on this one. And I'm just going to file the top of the bridge a little bit to get rid of those grooves. And I'm filing a slight angle back toward the tailpiece. Just a slight angle, very little. But I'm trying to get rid of the evidence of the grooves that are there. The other thing about this is this bridge seems a little high to me, so to me this is a good thing anyway to get to cut the bridge down just a little bit. I think I've gotten rid of all the evidence for the of the original string grooves. Now I'll just lay this in here, stand it back up, and first thing I'm going to do is kind of check the length again. Get it about 330. It's pretty close. Seems like I'm either using 325 or 330 all the time anyway, so to me that's just another standard for me. So I try to try to stick to those numbers. Fretboard on this isn't super wide, so I maybe can't go out as far as I might have gone otherwise, but definitely out quite a bit further than it was. So you can see that there. And on violins, you don't really have to put much of a groove there. You can kind of feel, feel it where it touches your fingers on whether or not you're about the same. I think I may just go with that and not actually cut a groove. We'll see how that goes. I'm looking at the other end. And it's not that bad, actually. I thought it was worse than it is. It, it, I still think it favors the bass just a tiny, tiny amount, but I'm not sure it's enough to warrant trying to change it because it's so minimal. So I think I'll probably just live with that. And we'll go ahead and tighten it up and see how it how it's responds to it. One thing about a violin bridge and a banjo bridge and, and even a mandolin bridge, they all pull forward as you're tightening the strings. So you want to every once in a while just stop and pull it back just a little bit. Again, I'm going to double check my 330. Right on the money. And it's looking pretty good otherwise. The sound post stayed where it was at. So we'll just keep putting tension on these. I'm alternating from one side to the other on this. Just double 
double checking that it looking that it's still looking good. It's looking pretty good to me. Starting to get some tension on it. We're a long way from pitch. And the bridge has moved forward about two millimeters or so. That looks pretty good. Now I'll tell you what, you know, this is minor, but you know, up here you can maybe see the deflection in that string. You can really get by with a lot less deflection on these violins. In other words, you can cut these grooves a little deeper and then they're just that much easier to play. This is quite a bit, really. It's, it's, you know, you. I guess you'd refer to it as setting your action as you do on a, on a uh, guitar. But uh, on the other hand, uh, you really don't have to have much clearance down here. Just the tiniest amount will work great, and it just makes it play that much better. But uh, I'm just going to go by experience and pick out a file that will work pretty good. This D string's up pretty high, so I'm going to. Loosen the D string a little bit, move it out of the way, and cut that down just a little bit. It looks pretty good right there. Now the A string's pretty darn high too. Yep, that's just about perfect. Yep, just the D string. I'll be honest, I might have got the D string a hair too low, but it, I still see clearance. As long as there's clearance, you're pretty good. As long as it ain't going to vibrate. And I don't think it will. And violin strings stretch a lot. I mean, like a lot more than your average strings. Like, they stretch like nylon strings. Let me double check the distance on this again. Just a, it's about a millimeter short. I'll just do one little final tuning and then we'll try to play a little bit on it. Pretty close. There, it's a little bit above pitch. Just barely. It's looking pretty darn good to me. I'm just checking everything. I'm looking at the back end to make sure that there's clearance on the tailpiece compared to the chin rest. I'm looking it over to see if any cracks opened up. I don't see any problems. I think we're in very good shape. Well, my friends, I waited till my hands got a little bit better, but they're not much better. <laughs> I'm hoping I can play a little bit on it so you can hear it.
there's not much point in me going much further than that. I really just can't play one to begin with and the hands are just too stiff. It's really got a nice sound. It's a nice looking old violin. It's a shame that the repairs that have been done on it in the past weren't really done very well. But I hope you enjoyed seeing the details of setting up an old violin. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not yet subscribed, please do that. And you'd really be helping me out if you just click the thumbs up. It sure does make a difference. Thank you.